Hello, this is Ukraine on Air. My name is Kristina Stricher with the latest news. Russian troops carried out an indiscriminate bombardment of a railway station in Kramatorsk, killing 57 of civilians, including children. On the 8th of April, Russian armed forces launched a missile attack on a train station in Kramatorsk in Donetsk region, killing at least 57 people. Five children were among the dead, more than 110 people were injured, and many are in serious condition. At the time of the attack, thousands of Ukrainian civilians were at the station, waiting to be evacuated to safer areas of the country. Wreckage of a missile fired by the Tochka-U missile system was found at the site of the tragedy. The Kremlin denies that this weapon is used by the Russian army, but numerous sources prove the opposite. Nine days before the invasion of Ukraine, Russian and Belarusian ag agencies reported about firing from Tochka-U as part of the Union Resolve 2022 joint military exercise. By this action, Russia has proved its status as a terrorist country, said Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmyhal. Russian Federation keeps launching massive missile strikes against civilian objects all over Ukraine. The head of the Poltava Regional Military Administration, Dmitro Lunin, stated that on the night of the 8th and 9th of April, Russian troops launched a missile attack on infrastructure in Mirhorod. On the morning of the 10th of April, Russian troops launched repeated strikes against the Dnipropetrovsk region. Enemy missiles hit the airport, the facility itself and the infrastructure around it were completely destroyed. A few hours later, the aggressor hit the same place again. Six rescuers were injured as a result of the attack. Russian missiles also hit an infrastructure facility in the village of Zvonetske. Other regions that have been targeted by Russian missile strikes are Odessa and Mykolaiv. According to the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, combat operations continue for the village of Oleksandrivka in Kherson region. A battle for the Donetsk region is underway. The Russians are preparing for active military action by regrouping their forces. Daily shelling and bombing of territories adjacent to the front line continues. On the 8th of April alone, Russian troops launched about 50 artillery, mortar, tank and multiple launch rocket system strikes against Kharkiv and the surrounding area, the town of Derhachi. Russian troops continue to try to break through the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces near Izum. According to Serhii Haidai, head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration, Russian troops stormed Rubizhne and Popasna while simultaneously launching artillery strikes on residential neighborhoods in other towns. As a result of repeated bombardments of Severodonetsk, most of the city's infrastructure has been destroyed. Also, a nitric acid tanker was damaged near Rubizhne. In the Donetsk region, systematic shelling continues in Vuhledar. The enemy is trying to storm the central part of Mariupol, which is held by the Ukrainian military. Russian actions against Ukraine keeps inflicting devastating harm for civilians. Fresh statistics indicate a larger death toll. From the onset of the Russian invasion of Ukraine to midnight on the 9th of April 2022, the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights recorded 4,232 civilian casualties in the country, 1,793 killed and 2,439 injured. The authority specifies that the above statistics does not include victims in Mariupol, Izum, Popasna, Borodyanka and a range of other populated areas where active combat operations have been occurring. According to the Center for International Security, 1,160 civilian deaths were confirmed from the 7th of April to the morning of the 11th of April. This number includes casualties in the Kyiv and Sumy regions that occurred on previous days. 230 35 people were wounded, 13 civilians were captured, and a total of over 200 civilians were abducted or taken captive. This information does not take into account all casualties in regions where active combat operations are taking place. Ukrainian refugees will receive support from the world community. More than 10 billion euros were collected during the Stand Up for Ukraine global campaign. Thanks to the international event Stand Up for Ukraine, which was organized by European countries, Canada, the Gulf states and celebrities, 10.1 billion euros in grants and loans were collected. 
These funds will be used to support internally displaced persons and refugees from Ukraine. As part of the campaign, the European Investment Bank is preparing a 4 billion euro financing program to support EU countries that accept Ukrainian refugees. According to the project, the program should work in 2022 and 2023 and will help EU cities and regions to meet urgent investment needs and address issues related to the reception and integration of displaced people from Ukraine. Horrible pictures from liberated towns and villages have demonstrated the scope of Russian war crimes. The biggest number of known casualties were found in the Kyiv region. The head of Makariv village in Kyiv region, Vadim Tokar, stated that as of the 7th of April, 132 residents had been found dead in the village. The settlement itself is destroyed by 40%. Ukrainian ombudsperson Lyudmila Denisova reported that a torture chamber of the Russian military was found on Yablunska Street in Bucha, Kyiv region. She said that according to Bucha city authorities, at least 360 civilians, including 10 children, had been killed in the city. The exhumation of 67 bodies from the places of mass burial of people killed by Russian troops continues in Bucha. The head of the Kyiv region humanitarian headquarters, Oleksiy Kuleba, said that most of them had gunshot and shrapnel wounds. The head of the Dmitrivka local authority, Taras Didic, said that between the villages of Myle and Mriya in the Kyiv Svetoshinsky district of the Kyiv region, about 10 cars with people had been shot by the Russian military and a mass grave with civilians was found in the village of Buzova. The EU has paid 35 billion euros for Russian energy since the start of the war. At the same time, Europe has given so far to Ukraine only 1 billion euros, the sum it has to Russia each day for energy purchases. While European nations, along with the US and others, have imposed harsh economic sanctions on Moscow since it began the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, their dependence on Russian oil, gas and coal supplies provides Moscow with a vital financial lifeline that dwarfs military aid to Ukraine. The EU countries pay 1 billion euros for Russian gas every day, equal to the amount of assistance the EU has provided Ukraine since the invasion. Moreover, payments for gas supplies have helped to stabilize the Russian ruble to pre-invasion levels. Russian fuel imports remain the lifeblood of Europe's energy system and Putin's invasion. Restrictions on coal may be announced soon, but there's firm resistance from Germany, Hungary and others to cut off the gas supplies. European countries struggling with ideas how to impose restrictions on imports of Russian coal, oil and gas. There is a strong opposition from certain countries like Germany and Hungary to any kind of this idea. At the same time, the Russian economy experiences irreversible changes due to sanctions. There is a strong possibility of a default of the Russian economy. European governments, having decided last week to phase out purchases of coal from Russia, are set to begin a debate this week about a more ambitious target, weaning themselves off Russian oil. European Union officials in Brussels are seeking to make oil the focus of the bloc's next set of economic measures against Russia over its invasion of Ukraine. EU officials are starting ideas, including a phased-in oil embargo, a tariff on Russian oil imports to reduce demand. However, there is a strong opposition from Hungary and Germany, which have strong economic ties with Russia. At the same time, the default of the Russian economy seems to be inevitable. The Russian Treasury has stopped paying dollar debts from Russian accounts in US banks. When an attempt to pay in foreign currency was blocked, Russia violated the terms of two bonds because it paid investors in rubles instead of dollars. Russia still earns billions of dollars from oil and gas exports, despite attempts by Western countries to get rid of dependence on Russia. However, there will be no rapid recovery of Russia's economy due to sanctions. <laughs> On the diplomatic front, European leaders visit the Ukrainian capital and show their solidarity and support. 
On the 8th of April, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and European Union High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy Josep Borrell visited Kiev. They met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. At the meeting, the Ukrainian side was officially given a questionnaire, which is a necessary step for Ukraine to receive EU candidate status. The EU officials also visited Bucha, where they were able to observe the consequences of the Russian military's crimes. The following day, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson arrived in the Ukrainian capital. After a meeting with Volodymyr Zelensky, Johnson assured that the UK will increase sanctions pressure on Russia. The politician also announced the creation of a new package of financial and military aid to Ukrainians. It is reported that Ukraine may receive 120 armored vehicles and anti-ship missile systems from the United Kingdom. The United Nations General Assembly voted to suspend Russia from the UN Human Rights Council in the light of the evidence of atrocities committed by the Russian military on the territory of Ukraine. The vote to suspend Russia from the Human Rights Council took place on the 7th of April. The draft resolution expressed grave concern at the ongoing human rights violation and humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. Ahead of the voting, Sergei Kislitsa, permanent representative of Ukraine to the United Nations, urged member states to support the resolution. He compared the human rights body to the Titanic and called for action to save it from sinking. The decision to suspend Russia's membership was voted for by 93 member countries. 24 were against it and 58 member states abstained. After the voting, a representative of the Russian delegation announced that Russia would withdraw completely from the UN Human Rights Council. By this diplomatic step, countries around the world chose to hold Moscow accountable for gross violations of human rights in Ukraine. Stand with Free Ukraine. Subscribe for our channel.